August 18. The Lord's Glory Leaves the Temple In my vision I saw what appeared to be a throne of blue lapis lazuli above the crystal surface over the heads of the cherubim. Then the Lord spoke to the man in linen clothing and said, Go between the whirling wheels beneath the cherubim and take a handful of burning coals and scatter them over the city. He did this as I watched. The cherubim were standing at the south end of the temple when the man went in, and the cloud of glory filled the inner courtyard. Then the glory of the Lord rose up from above the cherubim and went over to the door of the temple. The temple was filled with this cloud of glory, and the courtyard glowed brightly with the glory of the Lord. The moving wings of the cherubim sounded like the voice of God Almighty and could be heard even in the outer courtyard. The Lord said to the man in linen clothing, Go between the cherubim and take some burning coals from between the wheels. So the man went in and stood beside one of the wheels. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand and took some live coals from the fire burning among them. He put the coals into the hands of the man in linen clothing, and the man took them and went out. All the cherubim had what looked like human hands under their wings. I looked, and each of the four cherubim had a wheel beside him, and the wheels sparkled like beryl. All four wheels looked alike and were made the same. Each wheel had a second wheel turning crosswise within it. The cherubim could move in any of the four directions they faced without turning as they moved. They went straight in the direction they faced, never turning aside. Both the cherubim and the wheels were covered with eyes. The cherubim had eyes all over their bodies, including their hands, their backs, and their wings. I heard someone refer to the wheels as the whirling wheels. Each of the four cherubim had four faces. The first was the face of an ox. The second was a human face, the third was the face of a lion, and the fourth was the face of an eagle. Then the cherubim rose upward. These were the same living beings I had seen beside the Kabar River. When the cherubim moved, the wheels moved with them. When they lifted their wings to fly, the wheels stayed beside them. When the cherubim stopped, the wheels stopped. When they flew upward, the wheels rose up, for the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels." Then the glory of the Lord moved out from the door of the temple and hovered above the cherubim. And as I watched, the cherubim flew with their wheels to the east gate of the Lord's temple, and the glory of the God of Israel hovered above them. These were the same living beings I had seen beneath the God of Israel when I was by the Kabar River. I knew they were cherubim, for each had four faces and four wings and what looked like human hands under their wings, and their faces were just like the faces of the beings I had seen at the Kabar, and they traveled straight ahead, just as the others had. Judgment on Israel's Leaders Then the Spirit lifted me and brought me to the east gateway of the Lord's temple, where I saw twenty-five prominent men of the city. Among them were Jeazaniah, son of Azer, and Pelatiah, son of Benaiah, who were leaders among the people. The Spirit said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are planning evil and giving wicked counsel in this city. They say to the people, Is it not a good time to build houses? This city is like an iron pot. We are safe inside it like meat in a pot. Therefore, Son of man, prophesy against them loudly and clearly. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and he told me to say, This is what the Lord says to the people of Israel. I know what you are saying, for I know every thought that comes into your minds. You have murdered many in this city and filled its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. This city is an iron pot, all right, but the pieces of meat are the victims of your injustice. As for you, I will soon drag you from this pot. I will bring on you the sword of war you so greatly fear, says the Sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of Jerusalem and hand you over to foreigners who will carry out my judgments against you. You will be slaughtered all the way to the borders of Israel. I will execute judgment on you, and you will know that I am the Lord. No, this city will not be an iron pot for you, and you will not be like meat safe inside it. I will judge you even to the borders of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord. For you have refused to obey my decrees and regulations. Instead, you have copied the standards of the nations around you. While I was still prophesying, Pelatiah, son of Benaiah, suddenly died. 
Then I fell face down on the ground and cried out, O sovereign Lord, are you going to kill everyone in Israel? Hope for exiled Israel. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the people still left in Jerusalem are talking about you and your relatives and all the people of Israel who are in exile. They are saying, those people are far away from the Lord, so now he has given their land to us. Therefore, tell the exiles, this is what the sovereign Lord says, Although I have scattered you in the countries of the world, I will be a sanctuary to you during your time in exile. I, the sovereign Lord, will gather you back from the nations where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel once again. When the people return to their homeland, they will remove every trace of their vile images and detestable idols, and I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart, so they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people, and I will be their God. But as for those who long for vile images and detestable idols, I will repay them fully for their sins. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. The Lord's glory leaves Jerusalem. Then the cherubim lifted their wings and rose into the air with their wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel hovered above them. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the city and stopped above the mountain to the east. Afterward, the Spirit of God carried me back again to Babylonia, to the people in exile there. And so ended the vision of my visit to Jerusalem, and I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. Signs of the Coming Exile Again a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, you live among rebels who have eyes but refuse to see. They have ears but refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious people. So now, son of man, pretend you are being sent into exile. Pack the few items an exile could carry and leave your home to go somewhere else. Do this right in front of the people so they can see you. For perhaps they will pay attention to this, even though they are such rebels. Bring your baggage outside during the day so they can watch you. Then in the evening, as they are watching, leave your house, as captives do, when they begin a long march to distant lands. Dig a hole through the wall while they are watching and go out through it. As they watch, lift your pack to your shoulders and walk away into the night. Cover your face so you cannot see the land you are leaving. For I have made you a sign for the people of Israel. So I did as I was told. In broad daylight, I brought my pack outside, filled with the things I might carry into exile. Then in the evening, while the people looked on, I dug through the wall with my hands and went out into the night with my pack on my shoulder. The next morning, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, these rebels, the people of Israel, have asked you what all this means. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. These actions contain a message for King Zedekiah in Jerusalem and for all the people of Israel. Explain that your actions are a sign to show what will soon happen to them, for they will be driven into exile as captives. Even Zedekiah will leave Jerusalem at night through a hole in the wall, taking only what he can carry with him. He will cover his face, and his eyes will not see the land he is leaving. Then I will throw my net over him and capture him in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the Babylonians, though he will never see it, and he will die there. I will scatter his servants and warriors to the four winds and send the sword after them. And when I scatter them among the nations, they will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare a few of them from death by war, famine, or disease, so they can confess all their detestable sins to their captors. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, tremble as you eat your food. Shake with fear as you drink your water. Tell the people, this is what the sovereign Lord says concerning those living in Israel and Jerusalem. They will eat their food with trembling and sip their water in despair, for their land will be stripped bare because of their violence. The cities will be destroyed and the farmland made desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord." A new proverb for Israel.
Again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, you've heard that proverb they quote in Israel. Time passes and prophecies come to nothing. Tell the people, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put an end to this proverb and you will soon stop quoting it. Now give them this new proverb to replace the old one. The time has come for every prophecy to be fulfilled. There will be no more false visions and flattering predictions in Israel, for I am the Lord. If I say it, it will happen. There will be no more delays, you rebels of Israel. I will fulfill my threat of destruction in your own lifetime. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the people of Israel are saying, He's talking about the distant future. His visions won't come true for a long, long time. Therefore tell them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. No more delay. I will now do everything I have threatened. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Judgment Against False Prophets Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, Prophesy against the false prophets of Israel who are inventing their own prophecies. Say to them, Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits the false prophets who are following their own imaginations and have seen nothing at all? O people of Israel, these prophets of yours are like jackals digging in the ruins. They have done nothing to repair the breaks in the walls around the nation. They have not helped it to stand firm in battle on the day of the Lord. Instead, they have told lies and made false predictions. They say, this message is from the Lord, even though the Lord never sent them. And yet they expect him to fulfill their prophecies. Can your visions be anything but false if you claim this message is from the Lord when I have not even spoken to you? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because what you say is false and your visions are a lie, I will stand against you, says the Sovereign Lord. I will raise my fist against all the prophets who see false visions and make lying predictions, and they will be banished from the community of Israel. I will blot their names from Israel's record books, and they will never again set foot in their own land. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord." This will happen because these evil prophets deceive my people by saying all is peaceful when there is no peace at all. It's as if the people have built a flimsy wall and these prophets are trying to reinforce it by covering it with whitewash. Tell these whitewashers that their wall will soon fall down. A heavy rainstorm will undermine it. Great hailstones and mighty winds will knock it down. And when the wall falls, the people will cry out what happened to your whitewash. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will sweep away your whitewashed wall with a storm of indignation, with a great flood of anger, and with hailstones of fury. I will break down your wall right to its foundation, and when it falls, it will crush you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. At last my anger against the wall and those who covered it with whitewash will be satisfied. Then I will say to you, the wall and those who whitewashed it are both gone. They were lying prophets who claimed peace would come to Jerusalem when there was no peace. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Judgment Against False Women Prophets Now, son of man, speak out against the women who prophesy from their own imaginations. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people, young and old alike. You tie magic charms on their wrists and furnish them with magic veils. Do you think you can trap others without bringing destruction on yourselves? You bring shame on me among my people for a few handfuls of barley or a piece of bread. By lying to my people who love to listen to lies, you kill those who should not die, and you promise life to those who should not live. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am against all your magic charms, which you use to ensnare my people like birds. I will tear them from your arms, setting my people free like birds set free from a cage. I will tear off the magic veils and save my people from your grasp. They will no longer be your victims. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You have discouraged the righteous with your lies, but I didn't want them to be sad. And you have encouraged the wicked by promising them life, even though they continue in their sins. Because of all this, you will no longer talk of seeing visions that you never saw, nor will you make predictions. 
for I will rescue my people from your grasp. Then you will know that I am the Lord.'"